Greetings and salutations. My name's Ollie, and here's your loaf of daily bread. Today's little nugget of wisdom comes to us by way of Hong Zicheng. And he says the following. Life's fortune and misfortune are caused entirely by the mind. Hence, a slight change of the mind can suddenly make a different situation. What could he possibly mean when he says that life's fortune and misfortune are caused by the mind? If you've been watching my videos for any length of time, this is likely to be old news for you. The problem is not the problem. The problem is your belief in the problem. We're not angered by things. We're angered by our opinions about things. I believe Hong Zicheng is hitting on the same point here. Coming at it from an Eastern Zen or Taoist perspective, he nevertheless nails it. This is a universal theme, an insight that has been revealed and accepted by people across time and space. In every age, in every culture, there are individuals who realize that the mind, the psyche, the inner world has primacy over the outer. And this is a mind-blowing and world-shattering revelation for everyone and anyone who experiences it. Because when you experience it, you really, truly understand what Hong Zicheng is saying here. The misfortunes that befall you are not misfortunes. An event is merely an event, and even that is up for debate. It's quite hard to isolate a single event without making reference to other events that preceded it and other events that followed after it. But if we could, let's say, isolate a single event, if we could study that event objectively without reference to our expectations, our preferences, our wishes, goals, wants, and don't wants, then we would see that it is merely an event. But it's not a misfortune. It may not have worked out the way you wanted it to. It may not have worked out the way that was most favorable for you. But to call it a misfortune is what makes it a misfortune. If you suspend your judgment and you simply take it as is, you will find that it is neither good or bad luck. It just is. In fact, this kind of reminds me of another Eastern story, a Zen parable. The Zen parable of the farmer. And stop me if you've heard this one. And if you haven't, let me tell it to you real quick. It's about an old farmer who one day loses his last horse. And the neighbor finds out about this and he comes up to the farmer and he says, Oh, I'm so sorry. That is so terrible that this happened to you. Your only horse ran away. That's, that's such bad fortune. And the farmer says, We'll see. And the next day, the runaway horse returns. But he doesn't return alone. He brings three wild horses with him. Upon hearing this, the neighbor goes to the farmer and says, What great fortune you have! First you thought you lost your horse, now he comes back with three other horses. You just, you're doing so good, man. That's so awesome. That's such good fortune. And the farmer says, we'll see. So the next day, the farmer's son is trying to break these new horses, these wild horses, and one of them throws him. And the son breaks his leg badly, can't walk anymore. And the neighbor comes up to the farmer and says, I heard about your son, what a tragedy. How are you going to reap the harvest without your son to help you? What misfortune? And of course, the farmer goes, we'll see. Well, sure enough, the next day, an army rolls into town and says, we're here to find every able-bodied man to come fight in this war. And sure enough, the farmer's son can't go because his leg is broken. So you probably see where this is going. The lesson at the heart of the parable, which is that we can never truly know whether an event is good fortune or bad fortune because we simply do not have all of the pertinent data. What we have is a very thin slice of the big picture. And based on that thin slice, an event may appear to be favorable or unfavorable, positive or negative, pleasant or unpleasant. But in the long run and according to the big picture, we have no idea. And so for me, this parable tells me that I should suspend my judgment because you never know. The broken leg, the lost horse, these things might turn out to be good fortune. We never really know 
the true value of an event or an occurrence. All we have is a very small sample of data to go with and it would be foolish to assume that this small sample is enough. So instead of making judgments and projecting values on events, it would be wise of us to suspend our judgments and to just take things as they come. No easy task, I know, but there you have it. Until next time, live well, my friends.